New Zealand is a South Pacific country fascinating to flower lovers. Here are unique native flowers and shrubs of great variety. The clematis, a climber that twists through trees to reach the sun, and the koai, swinging in the wind like a million tiny bells. The flower contains honey to attract the birds, and both the koai and the kaka beak are fertilized by pollen shaken from the birds' feathers. High on mountains grow the hardy mountain daisies, and not far away you'll find the Mount Cook lily, not really a lily, but a buttercup. It bursts into crimson in the warm summer of New Zealand's Christmas. It is widely planted, and its color is as much a symbol of Christmas as the red of Santa Claus. Gardens are often planned before the house is built, and if you're a nosy parker, you'll frequently see a neighbor's flowers coming up before his furniture comes in. Flat dwellers have gardens too, but most people have their own homes. They are passionate gardeners, full of the joy and wonder of growing things. Planning the garden is the headache before the backache. There's an enormous variety of plants, for here almost anything will grow. Few gardeners will ignore gladioli, and New Zealand has produced special strains of polyanthus, which are much in demand overseas. Friends from Britain, rowan berries, and from Australia, the bottle brush, prove that neither grows upside down. And new world-famous varieties, some produced here by hybridization, lilies, clematis, rhododendrons, and dahlias. Children flourish in New Zealand too. Every family has a garden, and the children grow up close to green grass and flowers. The garden's the outside half of the home, and all the family help to keep it tidy. Who knows, with a little luck and a lot of hard work, they may win one of the many garden competitions. The judges are from the local beautifying society, and they'll be choosing the best garden seen from the road and the best seen from the back door. The winner receives a visit from the mayor and finds he'll be getting a new tree or shrub for his garden as a prize. Now his problem is where to put it. Where the house is determines the sort of garden it has, near a lake or by a stream where the children may go fishing after school. But wherever the garden is, there are always plenty of flowers to suit the conditions. Even in the heart of the city, there are flowers.
a difficult task for the local judges. The colour scheme and layout is planned by the residents of each street. The planting of trees and flower beds in the suburbs has a practical purpose too. They help to reduce noise. Today, the modern factory has its own gardens and full-time gardeners are employed. Work is easier among beautiful surroundings and the New Zealander is happier when he's close to flowers. At the famous Islam estate, it needs a poet like Burns or Shakespeare to describe the rhododendrons. But then, what poet would use a word like rhododendrons? Wellington Botanical Gardens are in the sheltered hollow and in a quiet corner ballet students hold a dress rehearsal for an open air performance. You don't have to wander lonely as a cloud among this host of golden daffodils, for with spring come many guests to Otahuna. Today there's a flower show. Local residents with their families, school parties and expert gardeners are drawn together by a love of flowers. Inside the tents are prize blooms. What the enthusiasts see here, they'll try to grow for themselves next year. They may see completely new flowers in surroundings especially made, as well as some of the old favourites arranged as still life. It's easy to grow these perfect dahlias, says the owner. You just put them in the soil and then neglect your wife and children for a year. Outside the tents, the children take part in a fancy dress of flowers. Local societies, children's clubs and schools have prepared miniature floats using flowers from their own gardens. Young people and flowers always go well together. It's a joy to watch both flowers and children growing. Of course, you have to water the flowers and sometimes wash the children, but it's all worthwhile. New Zealand is a young country, and with the help of a gentle climate, the green fingers of the New Zealander make it a country for gardens. <laughs>